While a nuclear war should never be fought, my guess says that if the U.S. demonstrates that it's unwilling to do so, the chance that the Kremlin will use nuclear weapons becomes real. Seth Cropsey is the founder and president of the Yorktown Institute. He's also the former deputy undersecretary of the Navy. Seth, welcome to the program. Thank you, Mary. So what are the circumstances under which Putin would order a nuclear strike on Ukraine, in your view? Uh, if he has, if he feels that he has no other choice, uh, that is to say, if the conventional war that Ukraine is fighting uh, succeeds and blunts every Russian uh, assault, as it has blunted the first one, then the chances that a nuclear, a tactical nuclear weapon would be used go up. So then what would NATO's choices be for a response? Well, there are several. One of them is to do nothing, um, which uh, is sort of symptomatic of what we've seen so far in response to uh, Putin's and uh, Foreign Minister Lavrov's statements, nuclear threats, uh, going on uh, special alert for nuclear forces. That, that's uh, all of those measures have received kind of a shrug from the West. Uh, the other response is to uh, use conventional attacks uh, as a way of demonstrating a NATO resolve. Uh, conventional attacks could include everything from destroying the remaining two uh, Moskva-class cruisers in the eastern Mediterranean uh, to more economic sanctions, uh, to blockading Kaliningrad in the north. But each of those sends a very important message, and that is, if Russia goes nuclear, we won't do it. We will only use conventional means, and that sends uh, a dangerous method a mes message, excuse me, not only to Russia, but to the rest of the world, our allies and friends and partners. So, included. so Seth, are you recommending then a response directly with uh, a tactical nuclear weapon from the U.S. or from NATO? No, I'm, no, I'm not. I, uh, I, I think that a a reasonable response would be to take the Russian use of nuclear weapons seriously uh, and, for example, to rearm our ships at sea, Navy ships, with nuclear weapons, or to uh, sink a Russian uh, SSBN or a Boomer, one of their uh, one of the submarines that carries uh, nuclear-tipped weapons aboard it. Uh, which they would need for their second strike. Both of those demonstrate uh, resolve and usefulness at a nuclear level without using tactical nuclear weapons. So you recommend rearming U.S. Navy ships with nuclear weapons? In response to the use of a Russian tactical nuclear weapon, yes. And But doesn't this instead feed into um, Putin's paranoia that NATO's out to get him and that NATO wants to launch a first strike against Russia? Well, there's nothing that we can do about uh, paranoia, whether we think he has it or, or not. But there's a great deal that we can do to deter him from using nuclear weapons. And the measures that I'm suggesting uh, would help with the latter. Uh, we can't send doctors over there. and. We don't know what his medical condition is. Seth, you write this, quote, the Ukrainian choice won't be between death and survival, but rather armed resistance and unarmed extermination. Does that mean that there's no chance for a diplomatic solution here? I don't think that there's no chance for a diplomatic solution. Um, I, I, I think that if, um, if Russia persists, and if Ukraine remains successful, that we're heading for a standoff. And my concern about that standoff is that the Russians would choose to end it by using nuclear weapons. But I, I, don't, I do not rule out a diplomatic solution, and I think that one should be sought.
So what lessons would you draw then from the Cold War with the Soviet Union for today's war? Uh, the most important lesson is that uh, that a, a clear, persuasive, and powerful, and modern, uh, up-to-date nuclear deterrent uh, that, that lets the other side know that there would be an unacceptable cost for beginning a nuclear conflict is our best defense. All right. Well, Seth, we appreciate you being on the program, and uh, let's let's hope that uh, we never have to talk about this. Thank you so let, much. Let, let's hope. Thank you, Mimi. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on any future Government Matters interviews.